Hello everyone, welcome. Today I am pumped because I'm about to set forth on a journey that puts me one step closer to my ultimate goal. And that is to host a charcuterie party where I've made all the meat, all the cheese, and all the booze. Now I've made some beer before, got friends that are winemakers. I've started making some sausage, but today I begin my cheese making journey. So I got this book called Artisan Cheese Making at Home by Mary Carlin, and they have laid out all of these recipes that go from beginning in advance to make just about every kind of cheese that you've ever heard of. So I've laid out a course for myself that goes through this book and goes from beginning to advanced and it allows me to slowly pace out my growth in making more advanced cheeses and slowly pace out the equipment and the setup I need to have here at home. So the beginning cheeses require a lot less equipment than the more advanced cheeses. This week, I'm gonna start off with some of the most basic beginner cheeses that have been around since forever, and that's gonna be direct acidification cheeses. But before we jump into that, let's talk about what the heck cheese even is. Cheese is essentially just curdled milk, and that process happens either naturally by bacteria in the air, like might happen in your fridge, or it might happen by adding some kind of acid or some kind of culture or enzyme to milk. Now we're all used to hearing the word curdle and it making our stomachs turn, but what's really interesting is when the milk curdles in your fridge, it is actually going through a cheese making process. The only difference is, is those are bacteria or molds that get in there that acidify your cheese that make it curdle that don't taste good and that smell really bad. When we make cheese, we add good tasting and good smelling enzymes or add some kind of acid that we know we like, like lemon juice or something, so that way we get a tasty final product. So there's other dairy products that are really similar to cheese that are essentially curdled milk, like yogurt, and there's some butters that are cultured butters that are very similar. And the main reason why we don't call those cheeses comes down to the whey content. In order to be a cheese, you're looking more around 38% whey content, where something like a yogurt, you're looking at like 85% whey content. Okay, so this week I'm starting with a cheese called mascarpone, mascarpone. Ma I, I think it's mascarpone or mascarpone. I don't know. It's essentially an Italian cheese that hails from the region just to the southwest of Milan. And it can be used in all kinds of things, but it's most famously used as an ingredient in the dessert called tiramisu. Now you can also use it in savory recipes like to thicken and give some tang to some risotto, or you can throw it into other baking recipes. All right, enough chit chat, let's make some cheese. So this first set of cheeses I'm gonna make, especially this one, require very few pieces of equipment, which is awesome. So you're gonna wanna use tools and equipment that are all made from non-reactive materials to be safe. I'm just gonna use all stainless steel. I'll put the recipe and the equipment list down below so that way you can make this as well. First thing we do is combine skim milk powder with heavy cream. I'll whisk all that to incorporate it up and then I'm gonna turn the heat down to low and gently stir until the milk comes up to about 180 degrees. At that time, I'm gonna remove the pot from the heat and then I'll add lemon juice to begin the curdling process. Now this isn't gonna curdle dramatically, so you'll know that you're in a good place when you start to see some solid flecks and the milk really start to thicken up. Then I'll add the rest of the lemon juice and I'll refrigerate overnight. The next day when the mascarpone is firm to the touch, I'll place it in a colander lined with cheesecloth and I'll form a ball and I'll squeeze out all of the whey. This will also help firm it up and then this will be ready to use. This cheese has a super short shelf life say that five times fast, and will only last about two days in the refrigerator. I'm actually gonna use this batch in a banana bread recipe from Bon Appetit. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining me today. And like I said, I'm on a journey to be a better cheese maker. So this was just the first cheese I'm making. Next week, I'm gonna try my hand at queso blanco, which is another direct acidification cheese where we're just adding an acid to milk as opposed to enzymes or cultures. And it's queso blanco is kind of like the beginner version of queso fresco. So that'll be a lot of fun to make. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what your favorite kind of cheese is and what you're hoping I'll eventually learn how to make and consider subscribing. All right, until next time, cheers. Thank you.